I wanted to start doing a series that basically just answers people's questions on Discord. So um, I tried doing this video reading out the question to you, and then I decided that's boring. So I'm just going to basically show you what I'm going to do to answer this question, which is basically creating a queue select component where we fetch data from the API, feed that into the queue select component, and then select the first item uh, that we get. So we're going to need ref for this. So let's go ahead and import ref from view. And then I'll come down here and we're going to use the typey code API. Let me just show you what I've got for that. So if you go to jasonplaceholder.com, uh, sorry, typeycode.com slash to do's, there it is there. This is just a really cool fake API that we can use in order to quickly get some to do's. And then we can just kind of like use this for our example. So there we go. I'm going to copy that and we'll say const to do's is equal to a ref and let's just make that an empty array this is a really cool thing to do just setting it to an empty array rather than nothing at all it means that whenever you want to work with this data you know that it will always be an array it's just a little tip that i like to uh, follow now let's come in here and say con selected to do because we're going to make it so that it selects the first item in the list and we'll make that nothing by default and then const fetching to do's because we want to have a loading spinner to give the user a little bit of extra feedback there. All right, next, let's say async function. We'll create a function that actually fetches those to do's. So fetch to do's. And now let's come in here and say, well, first of all, fetching to do's dot value is equal to um, true. We are now in a fetching state. Next, I'll say const fetcher. This is something I often like to do when I'm using fetch. Um, the it gives you back a response that you then need to pull the JSON out of. And so we need a name to call that. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So if I say await here and we use the fetch API and we hit that endpoint, that's going to get us the to do's. And then what I like to do is say const data is equal to fetcher, all right? Because this is, it's not the response really. It's kind of like the the fetcher thing that we can then get data off of. That's why I use the word fetcher rather than response here. I don't know, maybe response would be a better word. Just experimenting with this wording for now. So then we can say data is equal to await fetcher.json. So we can pull the JSON out of that. Now, we can say that we're no longer fetching the to-do. So I'm just going to copy that line there and steal it and say that that's equal to false. Next, we can say todos.value because we now have the data and we can set that equal to the data that we just got. Next, we want to get the selected to do, which is going to be the first one we get from uh, the back end. So let's say selected to do is equal to, and I'll just say to do's dot value, and then the first thing there. And we might want to be careful here and say question mark dot, just in case there's nothing in that list. And if we try and get the first item off of that list and there's nothing there, then it's, I'm pretty sure JavaScript is going to complain about that. In fact, let's quickly test that. Const my array is equal to, and we'll make that an empty array. And if I say my array um, zero and there's nothing in there, okay, it gives us back undefined. So maybe we don't actually need the question mark dot there. <laughs> there we go, learning on the fly. So now we've got our selected to do. Let's go ahead and map this. And this is often what I like to do before even doing any front end. It's kind of fun to just sort of um, scope the whole thing out. And we can come in here and say fetch to do's. And how about we just do a console.log of our selected to do dot value. I forgot the dot value here. Usually my IDE does that for me, but since I'm using stack blitz, that's not done. And how about we console.log the to do's as well? Save that. And there we go. We've got a list of all of those to do's. Uh, yeah, we'll just overwrite the remote changes there. Whoops. Uh, okay, so we can see here that we have a selected to-do now, and we can see that we've got an array of all of those to-dos. So it looks like this is working. Now we can map this up. And you know, it's funny, I've noticed um, over the past couple of years, once you know Quasar, once you know all of the components, I spend virtually zero time writing components um, in Quasar, doing the templating stuff. You know, it's really funny because when I first became a front-end developer, I thought getting all the UI stuff working would be the hard part. But really the hard part, and it, it, honestly, it's not that hard these days, but um, just getting all of your data sorted, that's usually the bit that takes all the extra work. And then Quasar just has an answer for all of my UI problems. So check out how easy it is to actually map this to QSelect once you've done the hard work of using the composition API to get your all of your data sorted. 
So we can say here, Q select, and we'll close that off. This is how I like to lay it out. Unfortunately, Prettier kind of uses what I think is a disgusting design, but um, I don't know, we'll see how this works. So now we can say loading is equal to fetching to do's. So we'll go ahead and we'll just paste that in there. And then we can say V dash model is equal to the selected to do. So we can go ahead and whack that in there. And then we can give it all of our options. And the options is just going to be the to do's themselves. I mean, <laughs> how ridiculously easy is this? Uh, and I think that might be it. Let's go ahead and save that. Or oh, there is one more thing, but I'm going to actually hit this problem and then I want to show you how it's solved. So we'll say style is equal to width 350 pixels. I often do this while I'm developing just to kind of make things look better. Um, and you've got to make sure that this gets called straight away. There we go. Now notice it says object object here. That's because by default, Quasar doesn't know how to get the label. I think it actually tries to use a property called label by default. However, in this case, we've got an object where we want to use the word name. I'll show you what I mean by that. This is a really important thing to know about QSelect. So if we come in here, we want to use the title. We want to use the title as what comes up in the list here. Now, what I see a lot of people doing is they go, they do something like this. They say to do's dot value, or they'll call that to do's options as equal to data dot map. And then they'll map the whole thing out. So they might grab the value like this, and then they'll return their own version of the object where the label is equal to uh, value dot, what was it, title. By the way, this is not how I think you should do it. I'm just showing you how most people do it or how I often see people doing it out in the real world. And now that works because by default, Quasar uses label and value inside of that object. But it turns out we don't have to write any of this code. We can get rid of all of that and bring it back to data. All we have to do is say to Quasar, hey, this is what I want to use for the label. And we do that like this, option dash label. So, hey, Quasar, in order to find the label on my to-do, I want you to use the title property. Let's get rid of that colon there. Save it, and we get the same thing. And how much simpler is that? Now it selects the first thing in the list, and that's because of this line of code here. And then we can go ahead and select something else if we want to. How cool is that? And unfortunately, this API is so fast that we can't even see that loading spinner, but I'm pretty sure that is working. Let's try again. Yeah, you saw it really quickly there just for a split second. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's how you can fetch data from the back end and then use it using Quasar's QSelect component. See you next time.